G'day guys, uh, welcome back to, this will be part two of the uh, teeny trailer build. Um, had chucked up part one last week, uh, had to shoot back up north, so I've managed to come back down again now, and see a bit more progress on, on the old boat in the background. Um, so yeah, we'll try and finish that bloody tinny trailer off this time. Get all finished, knocked up. I think last time I left you, I had wheels on, base frame was done, just sort of sorted out that gooseneck uh, and the hitch. And then we sort of left it at that. We ran out of time, the episode was getting pretty long. So uh, now I've got to finish the, the top frame part that the, the runners are going to go on, like the blue sort of plastic polyethylene sort of blocks. I bought the tinny down from up north this time so I can just test fit it all up. So do all that frame and then a couple of braces and just sort of a bit of uh, cosmetic stuff. Chuck the, um, the winch and all that sort of jazz on and uh, yeah, round it out. So we'll get into it. So I've just um, sort of measured up the height I'm going to need. I only want it to just clear the tyres. So the lower, the lower I can get the actual tinny to sit, um, the lower the uh, centre of gravity, really. So I'm not because it's quite narrow, about 50 mil either side, just because I wanted to fit that uh, same wheelbase or like, track sort of bases as, as the quad. I've had to go narrower. So um, the, the lower I can get the tinny, the better the centre of gravity is going to be. The lower, less chance I've got of tipping over and stuff like that, which is still going to be touch and go if it's going to do it. Some people are going to think that it's way too narrow, but oh, look. Is to tow the tinny around, I'm not doing donuts with it, so hopefully, a bit of luck, uh, should be fine, which I'll test in a couple of weeks time anyway and show you guys how, how it sits, but anyway, that's what that's for. Uh, Taking my measurement off there, I'm gonna give myself about 35 mil clearance. Um, it's got no suspension, so there's no reason why I can't get really, really low down. I just don't want rocks to flick up and then start hitting the tinny real bad, like over 20, 30 Ks of gravel and shit like that, I'll start doing a bit of pinging on the tinny, so I've given it about 35 mil clearance. Um, and yeah, we'll go cut some lengths, chuck some runners on it. Should go finish up pretty quick, I think. Right, yeah, so we've got a few lengths cut out. Smack them up on the bandsaw. Just gonna tack up uh, pretty much the rails now that the, um, the tin's gonna sit on. Chuck that blue plastic crap on. And uh, see how we go. So we'll just grab the um, all right, TIG, MIG, yeah, I don't know, maybe the MIG. So I asked the cousin, got any earplugs down there, mate? Do I got, need to bring any? No, nah, no, nah, I've got everything, mate, no dramas. No earplugs. So, paper towel. That's where it's at. And you gotta get it done. Works like a charm. Just sort of mucking around with some angles to get this is pretty much going to be where the tinny comes on so i'd say the approach angle for the tinny on the trailer when you sort of bring it in to put it back on the trailer just having a bit of a play around some angles uh, i wasn't happy with the first one so just taking a bit more off and sort of line things up and see how we're going to go so I'll cut these and see if it comes a better angle at the moment it's still basically nearly a 90 degree miter i don't know why sort of I was just winging it and measuring it out. You can sort of see it's not quite 90 degrees, but um, I, people don't know like a mitre, when I said I'm just deciding whether to mitre it or just butt it up. A mitre joint is two angles together. So yeah, you can do it either bloody uh, 45 or 45, will give you your 90 degrees sort of straight up and down. Pretty simple. Um, or you can just change whatever angle you want to where you're gonna have it. So at the moment, that's how it's sitting. 
and I'm going to try and change it to about about there somewhere. So we'll see what happens. See what it was before. Oh, I'm just gonna shave that really quickly. Right. So best thing about a milling disc guys, you can use one and touch everything straight away. It's gold. Right, so that's our angle now. Uh, I'm a lot happier with that. I think I'm just gonna stick with that. That's going to be spot on the money for me. It's my go time. I'm lucky enough, uh, one of my good mates, Jay Spencer, from um, Hunt Coach Cook, come down and visit him just before the workshop. And he just knocked up a fresh brush of uh, curry puffs. He's a goat. Wild goat curry puffs. It's handy to an old game chef. I'll give you that. So thank you, Jay. Appreciate it. Come on, have a look at him on uh, Instagram. Facebook, got a few videos on YouTube as well. Uh, yeah, check him out, pretty handy with what he does. So I'm gonna knock into these, have a crack. Cousin come down and had me slaying him down, so he found me some uh, proper earplugs. So we'll keep going. These bloody helmets are good. I don't know if anyone doesn't know they are, I'd flow. All idea of them, because obviously Golden Alley, toxic fumes, suck air from behind you, nice fresh air from behind you, and pump it in your helmet. But you've been on goat curry puffs all day, the air from behind you isn't so fresh anymore, and sometimes you forget. And uh, yeah, I'll let you think about that for a second. Damn. Been tinkering along, a little bit of time lapse in there. Uh, knocked up your two sort of runners, I guess. Um, basically, tacked them all up, welded uh, half of them. This jig table, mate, ah, oh, unreal. Bloody stick it all together like Meccano, I suppose, and just clamp it all down, it all, all fits up spot on. Uh, I'll finish rolling this off, uh, and then I've got to drag that 
uh, chassis to subframe, I suppose, you know, we'll call it subframe in, um, and tack these to that, and then flip it upside down, chuck it on the tinny, see what happens, see if it fits, see where we will adjust, and then it's basically just cosmetics, clean it all up, keep bracing. So we've been going at it for a couple of hours now. Um, shot a few welds down. Uh, basically, uh, this isn't for strength, it's just because I stuffed up. Uh, that should have been there. So then I could have another one there. Now I'm gonna have one there and one there because I'm just not gonna move it. Why not? Uh, aluminium weighs nothing, so why not leave it there for a bit of extra strength? Uh, I'm just gonna knock up a few braces now in between these ones. Um, right at the front here. So we'll smack them out. Uh, miter them, 45 of them. Uh, zip, 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 zip. And basically I'm gonna be chucking it all on. So just about there, I'll, I won't record too much of it because it'll just pull the shit out of made a little bit of a uh, boo boo. Uh, I could have edited this out, but I'm um, not for sort of hiding stuff and it makes mistakes. Uh, unfortunately, my haste last week was trying to smash it all together. I've just realized I had the trailer up the wrong way when I was putting the gooseneck and the fish plate on. Fish plate doesn't matter so much, but the gooseneck is a bit of a pain in the ass because I can't get in there to cut the welds to flip it um, so what I've done is the axle is now upside down. So this 50 by 50 is a bit heavier wall, heavier duty, um, but needs to be on the bottom. I mean, it's still going to work, but now I've lost 50 mil clearance. Um, so I'm going to have to make without cutting that whole axle off because like a hero, I fully welded it. Uh, so now. I'm just going to make little stub axle holders to fit underneath and um, hope they don't break because I'm not putting... The whole idea is to keep it light. I don't want to put another whole length of axle underneath. It's just a bit of a waste. Um, so, I don't know. See how we go. Yeah, shit happens. You know, it's not a great start of the day when your first tool you pull out is a uh, grinder with a milling disc. I swear this doesn't happen all the time. Time to fix up Kyle's stuff ups. So, this will be new axles, little stub axle holders. So that way, it'll be a bit of a gap in between uh, where they're mounted on, just give me more clearance again. So it's not the end of the world, it's actually gonna work out uh, maybe a little bit better in some opinions. So now I'm just gonna drill them out. And yeah, I've got one on the drama. I've got a little bit of slop on my stub axle because I didn't have any 5mm wall thickness uh, 50 by 50. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get a couple of stainless steel, a couple of stainless steel uh, M12 washers, chuck one here and just tig them around on the other side. All right, and that's actually going to fit and just on the outside as well. It's going to then fit nice and snug. And what it's also going to help me do is. If the axle gets crammed full of shit, dust and red dirt and pin down dirt and all that sort of stuff, which is where, you know, where I'm from, 
it's actually gonna make a bit of a gap that you can chuck a hose in there or whatever and wash it out and the axle will come out a lot easier than if it's a tight fit and it's been in there for you know months and months or years and bolted up. So that'll actually work in my favour. And still be solid, strong. So yeah. Alrighty, I'm a little bit excited. People who live remote are gonna get why I'm excited. Big country towns aren't gonna get it, but little country towns are definitely gonna get it, all right? Who knows what that sign is. I'm at Bunnings. Yes, we don't have a Bunnings where I'm from. So this is so good to get down. I was really well behaved. So the missus is gonna look at the bank statement and she's gonna praise me for how good I was. Just got knots and bolts and uh, you know, just the, the shit that I need. But Right, yeah, this is what I was talking about. Um, just went out of Bunnings. As you saw, I was pretty excited about it. And I picked up here the M12 stainless steel washers. Stainless, obviously, axles are dropping in the water over and over, and once they're in there, sort of don't really want to muck around with maintenance on them. So, um, however, welding stainless to mild steel, uh, when you're ticking it, it is going to take away a lot of those properties of the stainless sort of thing. So, you, you do get corrosion on your weld still. But it'll be better than nothing. So, your idea being because we have that slop in that axle, once I chuck a couple of washers on either side or all four sides, and then slide over top, and I'll just I'll probably have to, they are a little bit too fat, so I'll have to sand them back a little bit just with a grinder, but um, we'll get that nice tight fit. Just run a little TIG beater around there, and she should be Mickey Mouse. Solves the problem cheap. It's only a, you know, a hack trailer, so who cares? Uh, yeah, so I'll do that now. So I thought I'd just quickly show everyone who hasn't done um, TIG before the difference between the alley TIG and the um, stainless. So you got AC and DC, alternating current and direct current. Cousin, being a Wally. Thanks, man! So um, basically, I mean, you can see for one the color difference. Look at that, little oilies, all the oily colours coming through. Um, the alley's a lot louder. I like stainless better just because it's quiet. You've got with the alley plugged in, everybody plugged in. Um, but yeah, at the moment I'm just pushing a bead around. I'm not actually putting any filler wire into it. I'm just getting two little puddles, letting them join up, and then just pushing that puddle around the washer, I'm just pretty much fusing it. Uh, for anyone who did oxy welding as a as a young fella back in high school, that's sort of the same sort of principle for stainless. I didn't really have to go the whole way around. Uh, I didn't want to, I just did it because I actually enjoyed doing it carried away. So I'm just going to tack the sides that. of them. Is that? Oh, you're <laughs> No, we're good. Done it. So hi to the man who owns the workshop. Thanks, bro. Hey, bro. Portuguese chicken. Portuguese chicken, let's give him a go. Lemon and oregano. It's not bad.
So it took a bit of a break from the trailer. Um, as you see, get the boat out, uh, give me a bit more room before uh, Cousin knocked off. Anyway, Cousin's gone, he's knocked off for the day. The lads are done. Uh, finally got some decent cheese playing. Ed, if you're watching it. Sorry, mate, cheese is shit. Uh, yeah. So now I can finish off a little bit of stuff to the port as well. Um, basically, while the camera was off, uh, all I did was fix up my little stuff up. So, now I've got little stuff axle holders while we're on. Um, basically, it's just going to increase my clearance by about 100 mil extra. So, we'll see how it goes later on tonight. I'm going to stick it all back together. <clears throat> I've been flat out all day. I haven't had a chance to. Bloody have lunch, sit down and do anything, just trying to get this bloody thing finished, you know, you're just really working under a lot of time constraints, so really, um, as much as I enjoy it, it's just a bit of a chore, so I have to keep going, um, yeah, just, yeah, flat out, eh? it's ridiculous. It's sort of hard, you know, you just you want to enjoy your time doing it, but when you've got bloody time constraints and you just, yeah, flat chaff, eh? Nah, mate, I'll do it tomorrow. Plenty of time, don't worry about it. Yeah, so strap for time. Just, yeah. Not enough, never, not enough hours in the day, you know? She's starting to come alive! I'm excited! Still got some bracing and stuff to do and finish actually welding it all out. Uh, but basically, I'm going to put the tinny on it now so I can see where so the receiver, the winch and all that's going to sit. Um, We'll chuck that all on now. Uh, well, it's on the trailer. I don't know, I reckon the draw bar might be a little bit too long, maybe. When you're right back here to me. Um, yeah. I think once I, um, might be all right actually once i put my winch point on and some bracing it probably actually will be all right and you've got a little bit of a gap the tray and my quads actually going to come out sort of here um no it's not so bad actually should be all right but yeah it's, it's all right uh, fixing that bloody axle actually worked out pretty bloody good because now you see that got a nice Healthy but small gap uh, under that wheel, but heaps of ground clearance now for those wheels. Um, and I've got absolutely no worries that I don't think it's going to break or anything. It's happy days. Um, and now that the tin is actually off the ground high enough that the leg can be down and it'll still clear rocks and stuff. So, all in all, we're pretty happy. We'll, um, we'll keep plodding along with a couple of little things. We'll take some measurements now. Um, starting to get. Oh, Sun slowly going down, but I think, uh, yeah, I think we made some progress today. I uh, don't know if I'm going to get it finished off today like I thought I was going to. Um, too busy yapping away to running the workshop, but it's all right. Um, it's my time. So, if you have any questions, uh, give us a shout. Uh, this isn't the end of the, uh, the episode, but still give us a shout if you have any questions uh, about how the build's going so far, if I'm not leaving enough detail in there. Um, Make sure you leave that in the comments because I sort of backed off a bit of detail thing and it might be getting a bit boring sort of thing, you know. Got to, uh, and you know, just welding and welding and welding and time lapse, time lapse, time lapse. It's just not so interesting for everyone. Some blokes it is, some ladies it is, but not for everyone. So uh, give us a shout. If you uh, want to see more detail, uh, let me know. That doesn't count because I didn't pull the trigger. Even if it didn't hurt, it's not going to work. But all you welders, I didn't pull the trigger. This will be average. But it works.
Right, hey. So that's pretty much the end of this one. Now the end of this day. End of this day in this workshop. We're actually shooting off to another workshop. Uh, old boy and a couple other old boys are having. Think of a chicks craft night. Let these old boys have their little shed night. So they get their little pot plant holder they've been wanting to make for ages, and they shoot over to sort of a shed that you know, part of the family. And uh, pretty much like this, but just a smaller version in the backyard, and they all make their little trinkets. It's pretty cool. Yeah, old boys. Anyway, I'm gonna head over there and hang out with the old boys for a bit, uh, and we're gonna tig up. I just knocked up. I didn't show it, but I just knocked up pretty much the. Um, front of the draw bar. I'll go through it also, everyone can sort of see it, even though I didn't sort of build it in front of the camera, but um, I'll explain it, I'm, I'm gonna tick all that up, so hence why I'm going to the other workshop. Hopefully this episode isn't getting too long, if it is, I'm gonna break it into another part, so there'll be three parts instead of two. All right, stay tuned.